And investment in under fives, in lots of ways, of course, is an absolute no-brainer because, unlike many areas of public policy, it's one where the research evidence clearly shows two things. Firstly, that what happens in the early part of a youngster's life is massively important uh, in shaping their life chances and opportunities going forward. And happily, secondly, that public investment in under fives work really works. It yields not benefits that you can measure in economic terms uh, and broader social benefits as well. I think that case, case is very, very clearly made. And the third thing, which I think is very important to the way we approach this in Scotland, is that that in public investment works best if it mobilises community resources and assets. So this is not an Old Testament form of public provision determined by professionals and given out uh, to a, a grateful populace. It's something that's crafted and made within communities to match their own rhythms and sensibilities and using the assets of those communities as they go forward. And in my working lifetime, the understanding, for example, of the contributions that grandparents uh, and that generation can make uh, to the uh, well-being and growing up uh, of young people, I think, has come much, much more to the fore. And there's been really important progress over the last little while in Scotland around this, built on a very strong uh, consensus, both political and professional, about the importance of this work. There's been a significant broadening of provision and some excellent partnerships established. So what are we doing here today? Well, uh, I think the key thing for this, really, is in 2011, the Early Years Task Force, a number of uh, whose members are here today, uh, undertook a review of progress against the Early Years Framework that had been published three years before in 2008. And to summarise their conclusions, uh, they pay tribute to the huge commitment that was evident across Scotland. There were lots of very successful and engaged programmes, but no real clear view about outcomes and progress. So this was an area of public provision where data on success and on outcomes was thin and patchy. On that basis, there were concerns that were only intuitive, but nevertheless concerns about consistency, reliability and coverage. So pretty well every area could point to excellence in patches and places, but those concerns about consistency, reliability and coverage were writ pretty large uh, across the nation. And the sense from that task force uh, that fresh impetus and a step forward was needed. I think we would all ascribe to the idea that as we consider how we should move forward, we should build on the things that have been proven to work uh, in Scotland. Uh, two or three things strike me as especially important here. Uh, res respecting the particularity of local areas not only gives you the chance to respond to differences, but also points properly at the mobilisation of community resources and assets uh, in that way I was describing before. The second thing would be to continue to be really ambitious about the start that we're looking to provide for our young people. They are the bedrock of the future success uh, of this nation. Uh, they deserve the best and we should aspire uh, to it. And thirdly, to use uh, an evidence based approach to securing that improvement that we desire. So not thrashing about and hoping for the best, but drawing on the, less, the lessons and the science of actually what works in moving uh, scale, uh, moving change to scale. So that's why we're here today and we're looking for this uh, rich and diverse audience to explore and refine how that approach can be developed.